Can you see the slides? Yes. Great. So I'm Stefanos Papadakis. I'm a researcher at uh, the Institute of Computer Science uh, at Fourth. And uh, this work uh, was uh, uh, mainly developed uh, by Nestras Dukos and uh, Nikos Karamolegos. Uh, and let's see what it's about. Uh, the outline will talk a little bit about the motivation, some uh, typical techniques that are being used for spectrum monitoring. Uh, we are going to focus on energy detection and covariance absolute value techniques. Uh, we will see some details about our implementation, some results and uh, the conclusion. Uh, regarding sper spectrum monitoring, it's uh, something that is uh, quite essential uh, nowadays. Um, because we can have uh, insights uh, regarding the spectrum utilization. We can uh, check uh, whether a part of the spectrum is being used uh, by uh, any transmission. And uh, if we have uh, the available bandwidth um, for a transmission that we would like to, uh, to have. And uh, an another uh, uh, Another aspect that is not so obvious is that sometimes there are signals that are not um, uh, uh, very clear to detect. Um, they are near noise floor, let's say, and they do uh, uh, make harm in the communications and uh, it would be nice to be able to detect even uh, those low level uh, signals. Uh, because this would assist in the selection of uh, the band uh, or the, the part of the spectrum that um, is required for the uh, performance that we would like for the satellite to earth uh, communication. Uh, and the target for, the, for this project uh, was to provide a lightweight as possible and accurate uh, at the same time spectrum analysis um uh, incorporating uh, sdr uh, technology now the sp spectrum sensing techniques uh, the, the, the most typical ones uh, are uh, energy detection uh, autocorrelation based sensing uh, cyclostationary feature detection and match filter detection uh, now the, the uh, the two last ones uh, are of high complexity. Uh, the last one uh, requires uh, to, to have an a priori knowledge of uh, the signal that we want to detect. Um, uh, the, uh, the energy detection is the most lightweight one, but it is not the most uh, capable one. Uh, so, uh, we started by implementing, uh, implementing uh, the energy detection technique uh, because uh, it would provide us um, uh, uh, a clear baseline uh, because we know what to expect. It's a very simple method. Uh, there is uh, no need for uh, prior knowledge. Uh, of the kind of uh, signal modulation, whatever is being transmitted. Um, noise power uh, is uh, something that uh, someone should uh, properly uh, calculate in order to specify a threshold. And detection then is uh, very fast uh, with a minimum complexity. And how is this? Uh, achieved, uh, we use FFT in order to split uh, the bandwidth that uh, the device captures, the SDR in our case. We split the spectrum uh, into several bins. We, we can select uh, the number of bins that uh, we are going to split the spectrum to. 
uh, and those bins are frequency regions. Um, uh, all the bins have the same uh, width, uh, the same uh, amount of bandwidth, and we split uh, equally the, the whole bandwidth that uh, we uh, acquire. Uh, then uh, we check the received power in each uh, of those bins uh, uh, of the FFT transform. Now uh, we are using two window techniques, two windowing techniques, flat top and Blackman Harris. Uh, flat top uh, has the advantage to give a very precise, um, uh, uh, very precise measurement of uh, the uh, power uh, that we receive. Uh, but uh, it has um, uh, an excessive uh, spectrum leakage. Blackman Harris uh, is the opposite; it has better uh, spectrum performance, but uh, it is not so accurate in the uh, in the uh, power uh, computation. Now, uh, the energy detection requires two, two two phases: the calibration phase where we set the noise floor uh, per beam. Uh, for uh, this to happen, we need to have a clean spectrum. And uh, we set the threshold uh, by the max values uh, during the calibration phase. And we add uh, a margin of a few dBs uh, per beam uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have any false positives. Uh, and the user can define the calibration time in seconds. How many seconds uh, will be the calibration phase? The detection phase uh, is quite simple. Just compares uh, the detected um, power with the, th the, the threshold for its uh, beam. Uh, now the uh, uh, Whenever we have a power which is above uh, noise floor plus threshold, we can say that we have a detection in this part of the spectrum. Uh, in case that we use multiple FFTs, uh, we can uh, improve the false positive rate, but we increase the delay. And um, we can have uh, FFT uh, beams which um, are exactly as uh, uh, a channel uh, uh, width would be, but we can split it to even uh, uh, more uh, sub-bands, let's say, uh, to be more accurate in the detection. Now, a completely different te technique is the covariance absolute value. Uh, this technique exploits the inherent uh, correlation uh, in the received uh, signal samples. Uh, because uh, the wireless channel has uh, uh, its time dispersive uh, and um, we usually we use uh, oversampling, we use a, a higher sampling rate than uh, what is required uh, to receive the signal. And all this uh, assists uh, in um, getting uh, some statistical covariance, uh, covariances which are quite different uh, than uh, those of uh, noise. So whenever there is a signal, uh, whatever kind of signal, uh, the covariances uh, uh, calculated are quite different uh, than uh, uh, noise. So, um, uh, as you can see here, uh, I have a little bit of math. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, it's nothing uh, very difficult. Uh, the covariance matrix, um, it's, uh, it's a simple uh, a rectangular matrix and um, uh, it gets values from uh, the autocorrelation of the samples of the received signal. Um, we have uh, two test uh, statistics uh, that we use uh, in order to calculate it, uh, the convariance uh, ratio. And this covariance ratio, uh, uh, T1 over T2, um, uh, is uh, the factor to, uh, to set as um, 
uh, a threshold uh, for the detection of a signal. So when uh, this um, uh, uh, tick covariance is larger than L1, and L1 is calculated by the probability of false alarm uh, numbers of samples, some smoothing factor, uh, and one uh, Q function, um, provides the threshold. Uh, and when we are over this threshold, we know that we have a signal detection. Uh, there are three main parameters that are adjustable uh, to control uh, detection threshold, L1. And this, uh, these are the number of samples to correlate. It's a window that uh, we have. Uh, the parameter L, uh, smoothing factor, uh, which is the depth of correlation history. And PFA, it's the probability of false alarm, uh, which we select. Now we have implemented uh, uh, both uh, CAV and uh, energy detection in uh, GNU radio. Unfortunately, it was uh, uh, 3.7. Uh, we are trying to uh, translate them to the newer uh, releases. Um, we have built our own statistics block, which calculates the average of 1,000 runs per uh, each SNR that we test. And we have uh, evaluated uh, the CAV detection rate uh, with PSK signals of 12.5 uh, and 25 kilohertz of uh, bandwidth. We've used sampling rates of uh, 100, uh, 200 kilo samples per second and one mega sample per second. And we were adjusting uh, PFA and uh, the other parameters. Uh, we have also extended CAV by dividing uh, 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 the bandwidth that we get uh, by the sampling into sub-channels uh, with the use of filters. And um, uh, uh, th there is some uh, issues regarding this technique um, because there is need for manipulating, manipulating uh, the noise outside its uh, sub-channel. Um, I'm going to show you some results uh, uh, right uh, now. Uh, these results uh, are being um, uh, output directly by the statistics block. Now you can see that the sampling rate plays a role and uh, as the sampling rate increases, we have um, a better performance. Uh, but even with very low sampling rate of 100 kilo samples per second, we can get uh, a 90% detection ratio uh, for a smoothing factor of five with minus 60 dB SNR, which is quite uh, uh, extraordinary. Uh, I have to mention here that uh, energy detection uh, needs uh, positive uh, SNRs in order to work. Uh, now, uh, by using higher sampling rate, we get an improvement. Uh, and we see that uh, the different uh, sampling rate uh, requires different smoothing factors. So uh, with higher sampling rates, uh, higher sm smoothing factor is required and the opposite is for the lower sampling rates. Um, now the window size also assists the increase, the, any, in, the, any increase in this uh, window size will provide uh, an increase in the performance. Um, so, uh, uh, this is something uh, that is uh, quite interesting and it's expected, but of course uh, increases the delay because we need a higher uh, window size. Um, now, in the case that we split uh, the sampled uh, spectrum into sub-channels, the performance is quite worse, as you can see, uh, in order to get 90% detection uh, we lose almost uh, 10 dBs. Um, we have some thoughts of why this is happening, um, but we have not managed to uh, do some testing in order to uh, be able to identify the reason for that. Um, this uh, reflects back to the first results that I saw, uh, that I showed to you. Um, uh, we need to have um, 
quite higher sampling uh, rate than uh, the bandwidth uh, of uh, the signal in order to have good results. Now the conclusions uh, to wrap up. Um, CAV as a uh, technique uh, rocks. It's uh, it's quite robust. Uh, it has a quite high detection ratio with uh, negative SNRs and quite uh, low SNRs, minus 60 dB. It's quite low. Uh, so we can spot signals uh, uh, with very low power uh, compared to noise. And uh, we've seen that we need to, to tweak the parameters in order to provide good results. So there is no uh, out of the box um, uh, solution. Uh, the, 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 parameter, the parameter should be used based on the bandwidth of the signal, uh, the sampling rate, uh, etc. Uh, our future steps are to test uh, with uh, real data and uh, also compare with uh, uh, similar machine learning techniques. So I'm going to present you right afterwards um, uh, uh, deep neural network uh, technique uh, that we have tested. And uh, it would be quite interesting to test with real data, uh, both uh, CAV and uh, deep neural networks and see which performs better. Uh, because both are quite promising in those extreme uh, cases of uh, very low SNRs. Thank you all. Live long and prosper. Thank you, Stefanos, for this very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I can see there is a um, couple of questions already on the chat. So the first one is um, whether you can apply these signal detection methods to both single and multi-carrier signals? Uh, it, uh, it's very easy to apply both of them uh, in any kind of signal. So the energy detection system, actually it was based in some earlier systems that we have developed uh, for multi-carrier uh, signals. Uh, so we know it works and it works very well. Uh, uh, for those signals. Uh, the CAV technique, it, uh, it doesn't care about the, ki the, the kind of uh, modulation and uh, how the signal is, uh, is transmitted. Uh, but in case we want to uh, detect, uh, let's say, the, the, uh, the part of the bandwidth being used with CAV, we should use um, uh, the uh, the part of uh, uh, the CAV that splits the spectrum into different uh, subparts, and this uh, introduces uh, a higher complexity. Of course, if uh, this is run in a GPU, for example, where you can do similar things in parallel, uh, it won't be any problem to split any spectrum in. Uh, even thousands of uh, 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 sub uh, parts and uh, check uh, uh, with the CAV uh, the results. Cool. Uh, and another question from Akram um, is whether we can see how the false alarm is performing with different uh, signal to noise ratios and settings. Um, I think, I don't know if Nestoras is online. Uh, Nestoras would be the most appropriate to answer. Uh, uh, but I think the statistics block uh, can provide also this information. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if uh, we have implemented. Uh, it, it's quite easy if it's not implemented to implement it. Uh, to provide this uh, statistic uh, metric uh, as an output of the statistics block. If I may jump, uh, is, is it right to ask a question? Go ahead. Yeah, just to uh, clarify. So thanks thanks for the presentation, very interesting. Uh, so because as you know, when, when the detection uh, probability or detection uh, success rate is higher, 
usually it usually it counts as at a penalty that you get more more false false detections. Um, and, and then it's a trade off because, uh, as you know, for example, for the energy detector, if you just reduce the threshold, you will get a exactly. success rate, but as well, you get much higher false alarms. So, exactly. I, I thought it would be interesting to see the, um, the ROC curve uh, with different methods. Oh, thanks. That's just a clarification of the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. It's, uh, it's an, a nice observation, uh, and we should. Uh, try and provide these uh, metrics uh, also.